would call this project a uh, one and a half year um, project. So it's for us, it's been a while, and it's a it's it's been a really huge intensive um, research time for us because um, when we started this project, we started it just before COVID, so we didn't get a chance to um, go into the the real place. Um, I mean, the site much only two times, and then there was a it's just been locked down since. So. Um, I first of all, I have to say that this is a very um, interesting time and interesting, um, I would say, um, process, working process for, for everybody in our team because um, usually we're, we're quite experienced and we were kind of keen uh, um, with working with people from the ground, um, you know, the with the bottom up process and and especially when it comes to policy level, we were usually um, happy to, to work with people from the ground and come up with ideas to propose to the policy. But for now, we don't have anyone to work with on the ground, as, um, except for the, for the agriculture land reform people, Cody and us. So, and the site itself, which um, we can't really talk too much, but, um, uh, from seeing it, we, we managed to get a lot of information and also the people from phase one that already moved in. So um, it's a little bit upside down kind of process for us. And, um, but at the same time, it's been really interesting. Um, so this is an ongoing process of rural planning for landless people. And like Pinat said, it's, this project is on the agriculture and land reforms department's land, yeah, which, um, is actually all over the place, but um, the site that we get given is in um, Chumpon province, which is in the south of Thailand. And um, they usually have the name of the community with the with the plot number. So you might um, hear me um, talk a lot about number 0083, Hongjeran community plot. So, um, just a little bit of brief um, before we go into um, the process or thinking process that we have been through. Um, so when we got given the project, we knew that there was an MOU um, between the Agriculture Land Reform Department and CODI to come and work together on, on the Agriculture Land Reform Department's land, right? Like not said that this is kind of like a pilot project to um, kind of test or experiment on how we could use um, people's process in, in their land because um, the, the concept of working with people um, from the agriculture land reform side is quite different. And if you look kind of deeper into their process, their working process, when they select people into their land, you don't, if you, and if your experience with working with Cody, you totally find that um, there is totally no people's participation because it's actually usually done through a lottery process. So basically they will call for people, they would have a piece of land already divided into plots. And then um, they will select according to the data that they get given from the people who are willing to be part of their land. So what is um, missing, what has been missing a lot is the intention or the good intention that, you know, from people to come and um, resettle together, I would say. So for this project we've been doing, we have a lot of focus on um, uh, principles of um, um, eco-community, um, how to build an eco-community that um, has concerns on social area, ecological area, economic area, world world area, and especially people's intention. So the, even though it's, it's gonna be a lot of physical planning for us now that you're gonna be seeing, but um, all the planning, all the lines that we put, we, 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 we've been having a lot of concerns in, in using this to support um, this process, this eco-community process to happen. And then, so open space came in to, to support Cody's work and we're not um, fully involved with, 
um, you know, people's engagement process um, at this time because it's COVID lockdown, so we can't really work with anyone. So right now, um, we know that Cody's team, our uh, Cody team, is working on, um, you know, like doing the saving for people with people and also dealing with um, um, participatory um, ideas. Um, to work with the agriculture land reform department in principle right now. So um, what we have been busy with is more um, to do with studying the physical um, part of it, but definitely is affecting the social part and ec ecological part. Um, yeah, so uh, with, with this site, um, I'll just give you a little bit of brief about um, where it is and the background of it. So it's located in Chumpon province, which um, is in the red, if you could see my cursor here, um, which is in the red area, kind of narrow um, shape and has a lot of area, like the whole right side area kind of faces the Gulf of Thailand. Um, it's, it's um, so the geography of it is, as you can see, it's located, it's kind of like, um, in the middle of the Andaman Sea and the Gulf of Thailand. So you can tell from just seeing this physical um, part of it, uh, which is that you, you're going to know that there's going to be a lot of rain, there's going to be a lot of wind, there's going to be a lot of storm, right? Yeah, and definitely what happens is that it's an area that's influenced a lot by, um, you know, the southwest and the northeast monsoon. So um, Matt is already from the south. I think he probably <laughs> can tell uh, much better about what it feels like um, coming from the south, but so what we understand is that the the climate is very um, has a lot of focus on rain, so um, it just rains um, like more than um, six months or eight months um, per year, right? Um, uh, for the geography side of it, um, with with the area is it's. Um, according to the, the definitions that we got from the land development department, it's considered to be a mid-sized, um, low wave-like mountainous area with just two to 35% slope. Actually, 35 is very, very, very rare. Um, so it's usually what we've seen is, is that it's usually about two to um, 40 something um, percent slope. With, this is why um, it's considered to be a very good agriculture area or farmland because um, it's very low it's very it's not going to take a lot of energy sort of you know in terms of logistics and you know lots of other things and the soil is um, actually I'm not going to go into detail of this but it's just um, we, we did a study on this because we wanted to know possibilities of of what sort of plants that we could bring in to, to be part of reviving the area um, for the future when, when things get, get um, more tangible. Um, so it's part of um, Pato, which is um, the, the area um, uh, name. It's a kind of, um, uh, kind of sandy soil. Yeah. And for the climate, um, temperature is about 27 degrees Celsius, a lot of rain and, and it's, also considered to be um, an area that is in high risk of tropical cyclones or typhoon ka. And there's also a mark here that I put, um, which is actually quite interesting to consider because we found that um, about 32 years ago, yeah, in 1987, there was a typhoon, really, really strong one that hit the area drastically. So the whole thing got washed. So it's really interesting to consider how we're going to um, um, plan for this land um, to be a, a more sustainable land, a more sustainable settlement. And when there's disasters or natural disasters, it's not going to get washed out like what happened before. Um, so we also um, went to do a research on the history of the land because we, we actually got a lot of, uh, got very little information from from you know from the background from from Cody and also from from um, the the agriculture land reform department um, all the history on um, study we kind of actually got from um, connecting with with other departments and also from news that we sort of 
um, could go back and we could sort of dig um, for, you know, from long, long time ago. So what happens, and this is our connection. Um, so about 42 years ago, um, the land was actually a rainforest area and it was part of um, the Royal Forest Department. Yeah, but funnily, it was actually defined as an empty and unused land. And this is something that we were quite surprised about because um, it was almost like um, this land was planned ahead from even like longer than 40 years ago to, to be farmed. So this is something that we couldn't really go back much. But anyway, um, what happened is that before 1979, it was defined like this. And then in 1979, the Thai government um, invited a palm oil company, which is called Sahat Thai Naman Pruit Oil, um, to come develop this land to be a, a, a palm tree plantation. Um, and the land was contracted to do the to, to the company from 1979 to 2010. So that's about um, 30, 31 years. Yeah, so it was contracted so the whole thing was just palm trees, if you can imagine, um, for 31 years. But actually, that's not just 31 years because um, the contract got um, extended yearly until um, 2016, until the military government made an order to the agriculture land reform to, to, um, to reorganize their land. But this is when... The, the this land sort of got handed to the agriculture land reforms. Um, not sure about how, but for now we're working um, directly to the agriculture land reforms department. There's uh, the Royal um, Forest Department doesn't exist in this context anymore. Yeah. And then they, so after the order, they, the, the, the company didn't really leave the place because they, they were still, you know, like making money out of the, the land because they had a lot of palm trees happening. So they sort of dragged it until um, 2017. Um, but then um, the government sort of came in um, to sort of, you know, pull it back and made an order for the company to sort of like lay, leave the place forever. Um, and then it's been watched by, by the military team. And that's when we, we were... Um, I mean, the, the permission of, of us going, being able to go into work in this land was kind of communicated. So in, in total, the land was used as a palm oil, oil plantation for 38 years. If you could imagine, this is a, if you could look in, in, into this picture. Now this, as you can see, is a very dry, um, sandy and dusty kind of land. And, and as you can see here, um, there's a few houses happening and a few banana trees happening. Um, um, and these are the group of people from phase one um, that are starting to um, build a community with the help of Cody before open space got into to be part of this project. Yeah. Um, so when we started this project, we got given this site plan. Um, it's a total area of um, 6,281 rise, which is about 2,482 acres. It's, it's huge. It's, it's like, it's, it's a whole mountain area. And to be honest, I, we got really worried because it's so huge that we just can't imagine how much work was going to happen in our team. And, and we were a bit concerned if we were able to actually have enough um, capacity to actually work on this thing. But anyway, we started it, we needed to continue it. <laughs> um, so the first phase, um, I'm going to put the cursor here, um, was actually um, started already. And we, when, we, when we got into this project, um, it was a time that people of 105 families um, were starting to build their houses. Yeah. But, and the rest of the land, the rest here, were still um, just uh, palm trees and some of the areas were being demolished um, to be empty land. So what happens was um, when we look at the phase one, we found that 
there's a few problems in it in the way um, the land was divided into 105 plots. Um, I'm just going to put some bullets here. The first one is that we found that the plots are divided without concerning buffer for waterways and forests. Um, it, it didn't um, consider, um, you know, like the different levels of land, you know, it being high is suitable for this, it being low is suitable for another thing. This is something that we couldn't really see in, in the first phase. Um, especially the plots that are directly um, next to um, what natural waterways and because there's no participatory um, process or any community roles built um, from the agriculture land reform side for people to do or not do things um, in their land so we have a big concern that it might destroy the whole ecological system and imagine if 830 families are going to be in this whole mountain it's going to be a disaster yeah so that's the first thing the second thing is that we don't we didn't see um that many um community activities and the community activities that they planned for was more like a for the whole plot there's no um cluster level community cluster level to you know to take care of you know, at least 15, 25 families, or there's no um, program to, to kind of work with 80 or 100 families. It's just um, about um, putting community spaces in a very big scale in a few spots. And we have a concern that if you're really building this, build, uh, this big settlement, it's going to be a really um, there's going to be a lot of problems because there's not enough social support, social activity support that's um, that's planned in this in this in this um, um, community plan. Yeah. The third one is about the forest. Um, for now, what happens is that they they have forest area which they plan around this part of the site. Um, but there's no um, specific program um, for it being a sustainable place for, for the community and for the rest of Chumpon. So this is something we also have a concern about because, you know, like if you deal with 830 families and you define a place for forest with no rules, um, you know that disaster is going to happen as well. Um, so the fourth one is about the infrastructure um, uh, that is conflicting with how land plots are divided for people in forest. This is a lot to do with, um, um, with the streets inside that sort of cuts through the forest area or even like um, the the um, waterways and stuff like that. So this is something that we really think that we need to really go into details of how we should plan the um, you know the different um, types of land use in this area, um, not forgetting uh, the quality of of each function. Yeah, so that everything together will become a more sustainable will create a more sustainable place. Um, the last thing would be about no, having no particular rules in terms of um, land use. Um, for example, um, there are plots that are super, just like located next to the water, the main waterways in phase one, which is kind of around number four here. And imagine if you, if a few houses alongside those waterways are starting a pig farm or some animal farm, you know, thinking about the manure and, you know, everything, all the waste that comes from there, that would affect the rest of the land or the land below, that would be another disaster. So this is why um, we are really, um, um, we really need to um, have a revision um, for this plan. So for our team, no, we, because this is a little bit of upside down process. We didn't have people to work with. We didn't have 
you know, like um, the people we know that are going to be living in this area, it's, it's definite, I mean, it's completely an empty land um, with palm and bad soil to sort of work with. So we sort of started with um, dealing with the big scale of the land so that we could understand um, a little bit more about it and see if, you know, in terms of planning, what sort of areas should be um, um, particularly defined um, for particular things. I, I, I'll give you some, some more ex examples. Um, so this is a study um, that we did um, uh, about the physical slopes of the land. Um, we, we sort of thought that by making as many sections as possible for the, for the area, which is actually like sort of, it's really killing your eyes when, you, when, you did this, when we did these sections because it's so fine, the slope and everything. Um, but we thought that by understanding all slopes, we'll be able to define um, what should be where. Like for example, as you can see here, if you have no colors, orange color, um, blue color, or even gray, light gray color, you can't tell much where exactly you're gonna put forest, right? So by cutting the section, making sections of, of this whole mountain is very important for us. So we actually, we made more than, more than six sections, but um, these are just examples that we did. And this actually gave us a lot of information. One is that, okay, it's definitely a small size, low wave like plane, which is um, like what I said before, it's defined by the land development department. Um, and we know now that by looking um, at just the slope, um, the percentage of slope is not enough. We need to um, actually focus on the, the levels of the land above sea level. Because if you look at, at the percentage of, of, um, of this land here, the, if you look into the first section, you see 36 here or 22 here, it's such a small, um, land to say that, oh, this should be kept as a forest area, right? And you can't just have like a 10 meter wide um, forest area and that's it for the rest of the land. Um, but you need to find the highest part of, of, the, of the site to um, define that this should be a place where you're going to grow forest and it's going to be protected and uh, it's going to um, encourage the whole place to, to be more sustainable for now and the future. Um, yeah, so as you can see here, we made uh, uh, sections and, and we sort of put some colors on to sort of highlight where the highlands are, where the lowlands are, and where the waterways are. These are not everything that we found for now um, at this point. There's actually much more. But as you can see here, um, around the top part of this land, um, we found that it's kind of mostly um, higher than the rest, right? Um, and if you look into uh, the number, it's kind of, it kind of ranges from 76 to 110 meters from the sea. So that's kind of like, okay, also telling us what sort of plants um, we should introduce back into the land after the, um, all the palm trees are destroyed. Um, Anyway, so this actually helped us a lot in um, defining which area should be the forest area, which area is allowed for um, putting land plots for people to live, and which area along, for example, along the river or along the waterway should be kept as a protected um, sort of upstream, downstream, downstream areas for, for future sustainable um, condition for, for the whole place. Yeah, so this is um, um, this is our proposed, our first proposed plan. Sorry, I didn't have time to uh, um, translate um, about four slides, but I'm I'm gonna go through this um, with you uh, slowly. So what happens is that we um, decided that okay, looking at the sea level, we found that this is the highest area of the site. So of course, this should be kept as on um, the main forest area because um, it's a place where 
Um, it could um, restore a lot of water. And in the future, when the forest grows, um, it would um, be super useful for the land lower, blah, blah, blah. You guys probably come across a lot um, of these um, ecological um, system building rules. Anyway, um, but what we also propose is that you don't just um, talk about building where the forest area should be, but you should actually have a bit more definition um, on what is protected and what is usable. So as you can see here, there's like um, the inside area that is in different color. So in principle, we propose that, okay, you talk about forest area, you need to have protected area that nobody touches and that nature grows naturally. Um, but it can be surrounded by, uh, you know, like um, the usable kind of forest or we call it community usable forest that people in the community could, could go in and could um, uh, go and, you know, like find medicine or find things to eat or cut down um, some um, fast grow trees for their houses and stuff like that. So it should be um, sort of like located around it so that it could be a buffer between the protected area and people's houses or the agriculture area, if you know what I mean. So this is one big area that we propose and we also propose um, forest areas in other parts and other small parts according to the high sea level of this land. Apart from this, we also proposed to have a protected um, up and downstream um, areas, um, forest along waterways, natural waterways. Um, this is something that didn't get considered at all in, in the given plan that we first get given. Um, so what is happening in phase one um, is that Right now, people's plots are actually located over the waterways, which is something like super surprising um, for us because we this is like what, 2021, we, we still can't believe that this is still happening in Thailand, um, that we, we have um, no consideration around this area. But anyway, um, so this is the, propo the proposal that we, that we proposed in this plan. And the effect of it is that it's going to reduce number of plots because one, we have more forest area, we have more protected forest area along waterways. Um, so um, the number of land plots need to be reconsidered. Yeah. And then as you can see in different zone, zones here, we divided this whole area into seven um, zones. Um, this is to actually uh, emphasize on on um, the necessity to have um, to build this whole settlement in in a more how how would I say like um, um, in in a small group system yeah we have small group and we have bigger group system so that um, there's a structure there's a social structure to support um, from the ground to the bigger so this is something that we are. Um, demonstrating to, to the uh, landowner that this is very important and what can happen in each zone is that one, we could have a small, much smaller group of people to work with. So one zone um, in this plan sort of takes care of around 100, um, 85 to 100 um, plots or families. So it's much smaller if you compare to working with the, with the whole um, like 100, uh, no, 830 plots. Um, second is that we can have a more close um, social um, activity areas for people to really come and meet each other. And, and if there's like a system within the zone, um, maybe for example, if someone has a, has a problem, like someone is sick, he or she can just go to a community, um, um, you know, health, area and the person doesn't have to kind of like ride a motorbike or one or two kilos to to go into the health center in the middle of the this whole site which doesn't make sense at all for example we could have a, a, 
a child center that is smaller and can create like a nicer group of children, you know, like knowing each other, being together and closer group of people. Um, this is what I'm trying to say. And also, if you can see um, the round things here, you can actually um, sort of work around what is possible, what is not possible. For example, zone two is a place where we suggest to, to have uh, animal farm area while um, other zones like three, four, five, six, we don't suggest because they're super close to the big waterways, for example. Yeah, something like that. Um, in this plan, we also had to consider working with uh, the already built um, reservoirs um, from other departments. There's so many um, other departments involved. And what is happening is that they don't actually work um, in partnership. They, they just, um, what I understand is that they have their own plan and agenda. They come do their job and then they move on to another. So I'm not sure if this is true, but what happens is that um, it's when we try to get information about um, not just not about the land plots, but also locations of reservoirs that they were building in the site during we were um, doing this design. It was super hard, like because we couldn't really contact anybody, for example. So what happens is that we just had to like keep on doing, knowing that there's going to be some stuff happening and knowing that there's going to be a lot of changes um, when we go into the real site. Anyway, um, I think I'm just going to skip um, this one because I already explained um, about the community, different levels of community spaces that I that we were, we suggested to the to the agriculture land reform that we need to have the cluster level. We have to have the zone level that takes care of about eighty five to one hundred land plots or families, and we need to have a, a whole city kind of level that takes care of the whole eight hundred and thirty. Um, um, families. But what is different is that in each level um, can have a different focus. For example, what we propose is that the first level, community cluster level, can have a focus on the quality of life of, of people, um, functions um, that, um, you know, take care of people's health, health um, functions that is all about learning around the house, uh, functions around um, uh, health area, stuff like that. And then when you go up to another level, it can be more sociable, it can be more people, it could be a more um, exchange in terms of agriculture, um, produce, agricultural produce and stuff like that. And then when you go into a bigger level, it could kind of talk about um, taking care of the economy of the community or the waste management stuff like that yeah so i'm just gonna quickly skip uh cut and uh, this is another interesting thing um from our study that we found which uh, um actually comes from let me just read the uh, english name um of this um research review um quickly um we got it from uh this review called landscape ecology the application to landscape planning for natural area conservation and management in Thailand. Um, and this is done by a professor in, in um, um, Gasset Sat University. And, and what is super useful for this project is that we found that um, because, uh, you know, doing this area, um, working on this project, we have a lot of focus on not just finding um, plots for people to come in and use and live, right? But we also talk about reviving it because after it being a palm oil plantation um, for, four, or for almost 40 years, um, it totally destroyed the whole ecological system. So how do we revive um, this whole land, this whole soil, this whole structure um, to come back and it can come back to support the living of the people. So what we found is that there, there's a few principles um, um, for us to, to work on, which, which, is, um, which is to talk about um, having appropriate um, size of buffers between agricultural um, land 
and waterways or agricultural uh, buffer between agricultural land and forest. So as you can see in this diagram here, we are demonstrating, this is the buffer area, which um, ranges from six meters to eight meters. And this is where we try to introduce the types of plants that could grow in the area. And that would be um, really important keys to help revive the quality of the soil, the quality of the water. And in this here, in this picture here on the side is the waterway. And what we didn't draw on the this left side next to this buffer area is a farmland. So as you can see, we're, we're talking about having this appropriate buffer that is a combination of different types of trees, like big trees, canopy level, sort of um, fruit level, mid level, um, ground level, and also water sort of um, riverbank sort of um, tree uh, plants that um, will keep the soil um, good and, and not much of erosion happening. Yeah, so um, what is super interesting for us is that um, we, we propose the idea of having the buffer um, between the forest and the water, waterways, um, which actually didn't exist in the first um, plan that we got given. Secondly, um, let's come to, to this diagram. So as you can see here, there's um, green area all over the place. This is the idea to um, invite, um, how do I say, abundance, yeah? To invite abundance from, from living things, from wildlife, from water, from air, from everything to kind of come and live with this settlement. So let me just go back um, to this slide because it's really related. I forgot to explain at the beginning. So this is our site here, right? And it's located in, in this gray area, which when we look at the geography of it, we found that, wow, it's super close to the Nau Sea range, which is a very, um, which is, an, is a preservation forest area. It's a huge area that um, comes from uh, the north uh, down to the south, and it's super close to national preservation forest. I mean, to Thailand um, preservation forest, and it's also super close to national national protected animal area. So clearly, this has a potential to actually invite, like I said, a lot of abundance from, from living things to come help revive the area from being super destroyed for almost 40 years. So what I'm showing here is the plans for um, wildlife corridors alongside um, waterways and also along um, people's land, land plots. Yeah. And this is a quick um, drawing that we made, that our team made. Um, it's a demonstration of um, what it's going to look like if we followed the principles in the proposed plan, yeah, that I was just talking about. Um, so basically, we're just standing in the middle of the, the, um, the site. This is a picture of the site. And as if you can remember, I was talking about the higher um, sort of land area that we try to say that we should keep it um, as a forest, both for protected one and also for usable one, yeah? And as you can see here, because there's already existing waterways that we know that if we keep this happen, if you make this happen, um, this, this waterway will come back and it would feed the lives below. So this is something that we want to demonstrate, even though you're going to be having like streets all over the place. But if we sort of mark out the, the most important areas to help um, revive the area and also um, not just for now and also for the future, it's just a, a very interesting and, and important um, task to do for now so that we make sure we can make sure that uh, um, sustainable um, condition would happen in the next 50 or 100 years. Um, this is what 
um, if you, this is what we did to um, also demonstrate in how each family could deal with their land, with their land plot. This is a five right um, size, which would get given to a family, to one family, yeah? So what happens usually is that um, the agriculture land reform um, department would give a land, a piece of land to people for a farmer. And some people are farmers, some people are not and try to be farmers. So what they do is that they go into an empty land, they get given free plants. And sometimes free plants can be um, um, you know, part of the national agenda, you know, in terms of economy or whatever. But sometimes, a lot of the times, um, these plants are aliens to the land or these plants are not really working well in this particular um, context and this particular type of soil, you know, like the condition. So what happens is that we propose that um, one, we should work with um, um, the right types of plants. Second, we should definitely have a buffer. If this whole area would be a housing and farmland, this is the buffer um, between the protected area at the back that this land might be next to, or this would be a buffer um, between this farmland and the waterway, um, you know, the stuff that I was talking about um, before. So if this is next to a waterway, let's say, there's a forest that we propose, but it's a kind of forest that wouldn't just be like, okay, protected forest, but usable and, um, you know, people in the family could take advantage of, but at the same time, the number of trees and the right types of plants that uh, are introduced here and that would protect them from, I mean, that would protect the nature from getting polluted and that would also keep um, producing abundance for the rest of this land. Um, so we use permaculture principle to sort of demonstrate in this, but we sort of apply it into this context as well. So this is kind of like one um, demonstration, yeah? Um, so we have a, a street in the front, we go into the settlement, this house um, that we that is surrounded by um, uh, family farms that, you know, like people in the family would go and pick up food for themselves, come back to cook and stuff like that. And also spaces for family activities. And then we have a small, pond to treat water. This is also another thing that we think could be super interesting if we could have a waste management um, at a house scale so that, um, you know, the water and the pollution, you know, for the rest of the area doesn't get polluted too much. If we could have this kind of system, it would be um, really great. So we propose to have this waterway, so uh, water treatment system and waterway to also feed the rest of the farm. So as you can see here, we have a farm, uh, a forest area. We have a sort of orchard fruit farm, long-term kind of trees or plantation. And we have a fast growing um, short-term sort of farm um, and a, a small settlement in the middle. Yeah. So we propose this plan to the um, land agriculture land reform. I don't know if it's a good news or bad news. They said it's um, accepted in principle, but when we go into um, the real site, what happens is that uh, um, the um, the second plan that we did not get given um, during our process during our research. Um, was also developed by the agriculture land reform. So there's a big conflict between um, our proposed one and their new one. So we, we agree to go into the site and this is a site visiting um, activity to try to understand the current situations and what has already been planned and, and looking at possibilities to see if there's a possibility to combine the two plans from, from our side and their side. Um, this, this, is, um, this is what happened um, um, after we went to the site and we came back together um, to discuss, uh, 
to insist on on some things um, to the agriculture land reform department at um, the national level and provincial level. I'm just going to read this and explain this one by one, okay? Um, one is that we need to have community engagement areas at different levels, which we didn't find um, at all in, this, in their second plan. Second, we need, to, we need a plan to build wildlife corridor across the area because at the moment they still don't have it. Thirdly, we need to have appropriate different types of forest, well-defined for different use for people and this land's ecological system. This is a problem because in the second plan, we still don't see any um, um, forest um, area that's well defined for different use. It's all defined as usable community forest. So we're, we're, we, we have a concern that the for long term, the ecological system, this area would be um, definitely destroyed. Um, we need to plan for the life of waterways and create underground water banks. Yeah, so what happens in the second plan is that the land plots are still put and divided um, next to the waterways without buffer. So this is something that we insist to have. And we need to have a sustainable plan for a five right plot for discussing with people. This is something that as if you can imagine back to the five right demonstration that I was talking about, we, um, we proposed just one example, but we know that um, this needs to be discussed with people when once they come in to live, um, but we need to have a plan, a good plan for it um, so that people could adapt for the future, for their future agricultural system. Um, we need to prepare a place for, to accommodate people uh, in case of any kind of disasters. This is something that I, I, I talked about in the first place because this area is considered to be uh, um, uh, in, risk, in high risk of, of um, storms and because the, the whole palm trees uh, destroyed so it's just become a big um, empty land so definitely if there's big typhoons or big storms these houses are going to get destroyed yeah so we need to plan for the setback for the high voltage electrical columns this is something that is new to us also but because they they just put a line on on the plan but there's totally no discussion around uh, having a setback um, between people's lands and this high voltage electrical columns. Next one is we need to have community roles. Um, of course, this is the work of um, Cody that would come in to work, but the, have, by having community roles at different levels mean that we need to also plan, have physical plan for, for, for this as well, so that it could support all social activities that would be defined by the people. We need to have garbage segregation system, um, of course, at community to city level. We need to work together to define new roles and stand standard for this pilot community to ensure that this will be a sustainable community in the next 50 or 100 years for the rest of Chumpon City. So this is something that we um, gave, to, gave back to the um, Agriculture Land Reform Department. And <laughs> What happened was that we got no comments back um, from, from the meeting. So it's just, um, this is something we, are, we have been wondering if, if, you know, wondering about how much we could push this um, into a policy level. Anyway, um, this is one of the last slides. Um, uh, this is the work in progress. Um, we are now working on how we're going to compromise because by getting no comments back from the from, from their office, um, it kind of makes us also question about how much we should push and also how much work we should um, actually focus on. So we come up with three things that we want to talk to them about and we're kind of still planning to, to um, um, to work to negotiate with them. Um, the first thing goes into uh, talking about the collective agricultural field that they already plan, but they, they also plan it next to uh, uh, forest area. 
So if you can imagine, if you have like collective um, rice field area with a lot of agricultural activities happening with a lot of dynamic of people and traffic, cars and everything, uh, the jungle or the forest that they plan for would definitely not happen. So we propose that, okay, you can keep the boundary that you already designed, but um, we need to discuss about a setback, having a setback along um, waterways and the jungles, uh, the forest area for this uh, to, to grow, to be able to grow long term. Um, secondly, we go into the second, the second point is a community engagement spaces. We still insist in, in um, um, having different levels of community engagement um, spaces, even though the second plan of the, of the, you know, the site plan that we got given actually didn't show that there's a community cluster um, community engagement space. Um, we still insist um, that this should happen. Um, they can they can keep the boundaries that they already plan, but there has to be enough programs to support people. Um, yeah. So the third one would be about the forest area. Really important is that um, they can't just talk about having a green forest area for the area to for this whole area, um, but we need to define and make categories. Um, one is for people to use and one and second is to be protected so that we can make sure we have upstream forest, we have low stream, um, downstream forest, and we have um, enough area for wildlife to grow, to invite wildlife in and, you know, to support the rest of the community long-term. And um, not just on that, we also need to work on the buffer of of alongside the waterways that right now it doesn't exist in their plan. Um, sorry, I didn't um, zoom in for you. So what I was talking about is that alongside these waterways there need to be um, protected areas um, so that we can make sure that all the wildlife could um, go across and you know like bring back the abundance for the area. So this is work in progress of, from our team. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Who is the, I mean, that, I mean, client, you know, is, is it, the, and who is the uh, decision maker? You know, you present it to someone and still waiting for their, I mean, the, I want to know the system, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yes. Yeah, how can I think clients are, are two, two client. The first one is the, the landless people in that area. Actually, it have a system. It's a law actually from the last four years, no, from the last seven years since the military took over. So the people movement tried to fought uh, the, the military government to, you know, to deal with the landless people because it's, it's more than 60% of, of, of the population now. So they set up a land reform committee in this province, which is a com which is the uh, committee between the community network who are landless and the local government. So in each province, they select the landless people, you know, and this is a part of a, a land reform department as well. So this is a client, but the problem is the design planning did before we know who are the client in each province, yeah. which is which is very difficult to to deal with. So in this way, that's why we we we, we try to work with a, another client, which is a land reform department, because they are the one who who plan everything for people. At least they should have like a basic principle of. Mm -hmm or strategy, you know, how, how, how to provide a new system to the people. Mm. Um, just to add, I think I forgot to say, um, which is that we, when, when we started doing this project, we knew that um, the plans that we are going to propose are, uh, you know, probably just going to get implemented, maybe just 10% of it. But 
um, this is like a chance for us to to um, demonstrate um, uh, new principles, um, to demonstrate um, to 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 use this um, physical planning um, in a holistic, a more holistic way to, to to start a discussion with the agriculture land reform um, in and also to help um, Cody to also work with people because it's an MOU between, between them, right? Uh, agriculture land reform and, 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 um, and Cody. So the way we try to plan is that we try to um, support the building of a social structure in a small and big scale um, for this whole place. And we also um, try to consider all um, aspects of, you know, like ecological systems and stuff like that, so that the agriculture land reform could see that there's other possibility um, to do a site plan for this huge um, kind of community, like a, a, so huge that they sort of occupy the whole mountain, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really, I, I really like, you know, the, the in the end, you know, what you have uh, covered, you know, we need to do this, we need to you know, plan for this, you know, I, I think this is, uh, this is a very open ended, but very uh, in depth uh, wish uh, from wish list, but from a uh, from a uh, from a informed uh, knowledge. I think, you know, from uh, informed uh, knowledge from the ground. I think that's, that's I mean, we, we can go into very uh, detail, you know, with this also. And uh, we can see also the preference or maybe bias, you know, our bias that, you know, uh, about the uh, wildlife and, uh, you know, working with the community people mm -hmm. and uh, and also i mean uh, re i mean i mean the, the way you are you are saying that uh, you you will uh, we need to plan for the life of waterways and create underground water bank you know these are all i think very one topic is is i mean it's a big area yeah, but you 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 covered all this, and uh, as you said that uh, we can maybe achieve ten percent of it, or maybe we can. And I was also thinking, what what could be the entry, entry or starting point? Mm -hmm. Maybe you know, if the people and the authorities, uh, not the not as a as a organization, but as as a person. As people, maybe their interest is oh, uh, the maybe a few people their interest is about oh let's try about this wildlife, or somebody oh let's try about this uh, waterways water, mm -hmm. maybe that could be the entry point. You know that's yeah. what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Later on, you know some other people can come and oh that uh, now we want to focus on uh, uh, other points also. So mm. this is, I mean, very interesting way of, of mm. you know, putting it. And also I like that uh, the visuals, mm -hmm. very, uh, uh, very easy to understand for, uh, for all types of people. Mm. Thanks, from, Kabir. From, from the, I mean, the, the people, th those who are on the ground, like the farmers and, and the rural people, and also the people uh, in Kodi and other places, you know, and also, you know, people like us, professionals. <laughs> I think these are very, very good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was, uh, I was uh, thinking you know, how to, how to make these people uh, enthusiastic, you know, <laughs> ah, let's do it, you know, let's, ah, you did great thing, you know, let's do it, you know, today, you know, and from where to start, you know, I was thinking how to do that. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. we we keep this cut this now with ploy and I think mm -hmm. look back to us from the working with the urban people and actually we have a passionate for for this 
this role for a long time. And I think we have chance to visit many, many rural farmland no? where the people they they try the agriculture like a natural way of mm. of building their own agriculture and we got inspired so i think this kind of experience if if they don't have covid i think we can have a trip with them to you know to visit those those local wisdom mm. from, from the farmland that that is one thing we can think about but you know the big problem of, of our country is we have enough land for all the landless farmer from their own research of land reform, uh, agriculture land reform department. They said uh, each family should have like a 11 right it's, it's for, for survival, no? that they, they can have enough land for, for survive and do their business. But actually, for our design planning and look at the 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 whole the big picture of, of Thailand nowadays, we have more landless people. So the, the big argument is what are the smallest plot where the people can you know can rebuild themselves? So we need to thinking in terms of bring the sustainable uh, mm-hmm. development to the, the the design or the permaculture concept or dealing with the um forest area no? so this car project can be a part of ecological bridge to to the 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 mother forest that still exists so that that is the the strategy so if we can do that you know we we can use the very small land like maybe one acre is enough for one family if the land is fertile like the idea that ploy tried to show but i'm 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 quite surprised that when when we present this to the executive director of uh, agriculture land reform, they they really like the idea and they enforce of all of that that senior staff to you know to <laughs> to to push this idea to this side. But but again, you know, the people in in this department, they they. I don't. I I think they they not have a passion for this, or they don't have experience, or they don't try to understand this this kind of simple concept. No, this is still a big gap. Yeah. That we found. Yeah. So just just to respond to um what you were saying, Kabir, um, from you know these these um, oh wait, the these points that we sort of come back and, and gave to them, we know that it was super overwhelming because there's so many things to be considered. And um, Pinat and I um, discussed that, okay, it's important for us to carefully select what um, topics that we are going to start with. And then we, from there, like you said, an entry point, and from there we can, can um, also um, secretly hack into their system. So um, um, what, what we have selected for now is these three points that we thought could be the most obvious and the most, um, I would say easiest um, to deal with because they're quite physical um, and they, they, um, they have, um, and we have, I guess, like enough uh, data or principles available, um, pretty universal, um, enough of that um to help us convince yeah so um so these are the three points and this is just the work still a work in progress yeah like i said before um i i I'd also like to add one thing um one thing that i was quite surprised is that um you know after going to the do a site visit with the agriculture land reform team they're actually pretty nice people and but what i found is that they kept saying that they don't know how to work with people. They, they sometimes they said no to our ideas because they, they said they don't, they, 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 they're not skilled, they're not experienced and they don't know how to, like really, they really emphasized on this um, because they're really technical people. But I think I'm really glad that they said it because then we can respond back that we, we this is why we're here to, to work together with them, yeah. It's just like some kind of personality that I didn't expect to see, but um, it was quite interesting to to see them 
accepting the fact that they they're scared. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly yeah. they are engineer. They mm-hmm. just Sci-fi. have maybe not more than five architects in the whole big mm-hmm. department. Yeah, and there are of different are type engineers. Their architects are still like really young, like mm-hmm. much younger than me. Yeah, new graduates. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Anyone so else? We, Any yes. more questions or anything to share? I just wanted to say uh, that even if you're right and only 10% of it gets applied, mm. I think it's really, really important from a research point of view to just mm. have this site analysis done in this way, in such a holistic way and working with the people and with the nature and really having like all these zones of contact Mm. so maybe you're wrong and maybe more of it will be taken in but even like just having done it as an exercise of how can we plan better for such a big area I think that's really Mm. yeah 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 and we have to say thank you to you because you're part of the big research that we um, (laughs) (laughs) are this project yeah how about in Bangladesh? Do you have this kind of program? I mean, for rural, for the landless people? Do you have a land reform department? This kind of thing? No, I mean, uh, not land reform department, but we have programs, you know, in, in Bangla, we call it, you know, Ekti Bari, Ekti Kamar. That means one house, one agricultural land, you know? Mm. Uh, so that type of program, so they, uh, the government uh, provide a minimum area, sometimes provide or sometimes they have it, uh, land and uh, government uh, provide them the training uh, and also sometimes money uh, to build their houses and also agriculture. But mostly those are very, uh, you know, that type of market focused agriculture i mean this is i, I mean this is what the whole uh, agriculture department is uh, is uh, doing in our country and uh, when we discuss with them about this uh, you know food forest you know the the, the 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 ecology and the system of forest you know in the forest you can get you know, many things in different layers you know underground and overground in the dark, the image you showed you know, the, about the forest, a you know, lot of layers. I mean, that, uh, that thing actually is missing. And uh, the thing is that uh, they, uh, they have that also confidence missing that, oh, we can't do it. And we don't have that uh, evidence here. So they, don't, they, are, they fear to work with uh, you know, uh, forest community, and they also fear to work with people community, you know, human community. So they don't know how to work with the community. I mean, it's good that they they confess it. You know, this is the thing. Many people they don't confess. In our country, they don't confess. That, but the main problem is that they don't work. They don't know how to work with community. Mm. I think that's that's the thing uh, that's where actually we can contribute those who feel that <laughs> we <laughs> we uh, we feel good working with people uh, and not people i mean community you know people community and, and uh, human community and non-human community uh, then i think we can focus on that and rest of the things they can do it by themselves if they understand it because they have other other knowledge scientific knowledge but in our country, we are suffering from you know this, the same thing. But you know sometimes, like we now we have been working uh, in uh, Rohingya camp, you know Rohingya uh, refugee camps. And after this, uh, they came here in seventeen, so it's uh, four years. Now uh, the. The, from people side and from organization side and from the beginning from government side uh, there is a push that we need to bring back the nature because it's completely gone so uh, they are now pushing uh, it and many organizations so we have been also working there 
and it's the same way it's very difficult to uh, convince these people that it is possible like you know nature comes naturally as you said but we need to help nature you know to come faster <laughs> so some of the things uh, uh, we were try we are trying to push that uh, in in smaller scale okay leave this area leave this area from uh, you know, don't go inside you know people and also uh, domestic animals because they are also uh, taking many things and uh, so this is one one area and another another uh, system is okay we uh, keep this area undisturbed and also we are assisting and interesting thing is that uh, in many places many people did or spontaneously many any many areas it, it's happening so we are trying to uh, because we are trying to take those examples as case study you see there is a village and and this area was kept um, maybe 3 years and this became like this and in few years they they assisted and we did some some uh, also in some smaller areas and also like uh, sometimes we bring like in you know, homeopathy or <laughs> we bring uh, some soil uh, from the from the forest floor and throw it in the new you know uh, this disturbed soil and also this you know try try to keep the water here and many interesting thing happen i mean beyond our you know very quickly so those are the things we are trying to push uh, in a smaller scale you know that's that's our context <laughs> yeah I, th i think the big problem for 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 this program in thailand is is they still give a individualized uh it's a kind of land title every every family they got their own land title before we work with before we, we work with them a lot of research show that most of the farm uh the landless people they, they sold the land to to the you know to other because they got it free and some land they you know it's very far away from their workplace or it's not fertile enough to grow anything so it's always like that that's why we we need to focus in like a how how to build an organization or cooperative so the people can deal with with collective land and they can you know they can be an agent to deal with a segment of department that try to keep this and that you know <laughs> so i think the people have have to have their own vision what 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 they want to do mm. and the second thing of in term of reintroduce a natural way of you know it's it's a, it's a part of healing because most of the land is is lost the the fert fertility you know mm. but we can recover it very simple if, if we understand the law of nature we try to um create or we try to encourage people to have a an intention to to live together, I think, and also an intention to be part of the land they they're going to live in, and what 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 is missing here in in this process of I think of of this landowner that we we're working with is that they um, they like Peanut said it's very an individual kind of process and they what what is important is that okay. A landless people become uh, landful uh, people, um, and just that there's totally no encouragement for connections in between any in any um, directions, yeah, or any dimensions, yeah. So it's it's been quite a challenge for us. The other thing I I just realized that I forgot to say is that we're kind of in the process of trying to propose a lot of um, ideas that we believe sustainable um, while all the lines are on the plan have been finalized and written. 
you know, written and finalized already by the National uh, Agriculture Land Reform Department. So they completely um, reject um, the change of lines on the plan. So mm -hmm. this is um, the situation that we're in and trying to seek ways to, to work with those lines. That's why um, in a lot of notes that I put, um, show that we, okay, we're keeping your lines, your boundaries that you already put, but here are the details that you need to consider. For example, okay, you keep the size of the forest, but you need to define dif different types of forest that is going to be there, for example. So this is, it's, we're really in the process of trying to, to really um, <laughs> sneak in um, to that process by um, leaving the visual part for them to see that, okay, nothing's changing, but um, actually there's a lot happening under the paper, under that paper that they see. Yeah. I think since last time when they talking about the, the urban farm, no? actually they also work a lot with, with the urban uh, rural planning with, with the Kodi project. So we think maybe we can try to encourage our CAN network in other country to, to try to, you know, engage with the rural development. I think maybe it's quite a lot of hope. Some, some, I have been working with the rural part since, you know, since 2005. So I, I realized that they have a lot of potential to work with the rural people and, and local authority, they, they quite, you know, close to the people that is some some good thing and they there's they still have a lot of potential from nature itself as well so in this way maybe we we can we can learn and we can use our skill of working with people and you know make a lot of change to the rural mm. rural planning process that it, it need now i think in in every country like last time we talked with the Philippines in Davao, no? you don't have land anymore in the city, but you're freezing the agriculture land that surround the city. Why don't we find a way to, you know, reconnect the rural and urban together, which is quite crucial and need in this, this time. But we need to learn a lot from nature now, <laughs> how, how it works. Actually, it's the law of co-creation. We can learn it everywhere. We need uh, to open our senses. And, you know, for example, when we work with the rural, we, we love to, to visit uh, the people farm and enjoy to, to talk with them. Why they grow this here? Why they dig the well here? Why they put this here? You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of knowledge that, you know, accumulate from generation to generation. Uh, uh, thank you to everyone for joining and I know that there's a lot more people wanting to join but they, they couldn't make it so yeah thanks to Vinat as well for, for making this happen um, very I'm very much looking forward to see it on the website yeah yeah thanks Nav and thanks the in uh, the the Philippine team and thanks the to, to other Bangladesh um, team for joining yeah I hope it's yeah. useful. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very inspiring. <laughs>